thank you everyone who has uh, been able to join us today. Thanks for taking some time out of your busy schedules. Um, we're very excited to talk to you today about the topic you see here on the screen, um, our, our panel discussion on platform adoption and ROI challenges. Um, most of the folks we have on the line today, um, you know, either work for the federal government or support the federal government. But you know, I do want to say that the concepts we're talking about, these things, these are things that are really universally true across any sector. So if you're not part of the federal government and you're on today, don't worry, you're not on the wrong um, event. Uh, there's certainly going to be a lot of information here that I think will be relevant to everybody. Um, additionally, um, I, I I did want to mention that um, this this topic, you know, platform adoption, it sounds kind of you know, high level and generic, but you know, as we look at digital transformation in general across the federal government, again, all sectors, so much of that now seems to be dependent on these larger, you know, critical platforms, platforms like Pega, ServiceNow, Appian, or, or whatever that platform might be. And, and we're finding that, um, you know, so, so many of the challenges associated with pushing transformation forward really, you know, relate directly to the adoption of those platforms. And the ability to realize the intended ROI of those platforms. And so we thought um, as part of our three-part series over the winter here, um, this would be a good place to start as I'm sure a lot of folks out there um, are experiencing these challenges and want to know more about uh, how to address those. So um, that's really why we, we, we came to this um, conclusion today. So um, another thing I want to mention before um, I introduce myself and Leanne, uh, there's a really nice cross-section of attendees today. Uh, we have folks that work in the federal government from practitioners up to C-level executives. Uh, we also have uh, a lot of folks like us on the line who are um, partners like Sky Solutions who are out there working really hard to uh, create solutions for um, the federal agencies and departments that, that they work for and serve. So just a real nice cross section of, uh, of attendees today on this, on, this, uh, on this call. So I'm glad to see that. Uh, but uh, without further ado, um, I'm Michael Hoke. I'm the Director of Business Development here at Sky Solutions. And uh, I, along with Leanne Christopher, our platform operations lead, will be uh, moderating uh, the event today. So we're so glad to have you. Um, thank you again for everyone for being here. And um, uh, why don't we go ahead and move on to the next slide and um, kick this thing off. Wonderful. So uh, just a quick outline of what we will be doing today. Pretty simple. Um, I sent out prior to this meeting um, some information on the panelists and their bios. Uh, but I'll, I'll touch on that real quickly in a minute, just so you all can see who is on the line uh, as you might have questions for these people based on their, uh, their expertise. I'll do a quick introduction to Sky Solutions. Um, and then after that, we will kick off the discussion topics with a couple of survey questions uh, just to get a feel for um, what might be in common with the audience and um, uh, what, we, what we might want to touch on and some things that could, you know, frankly, uh, steer the conversation in a certain way. And then we will go into each of these conversation topics. We'll have a Q&A at the end. Um, you know, Q&As are pretty standard, but again, keep in mind, we're gonna have folks on this call that are practice leads for very specific platforms. And you might have a question about what we're talking about, about the platform. Uh, feel free to submit those questions into the chat uh, window and we will try our best to get to those throughout and then certainly um, at the end. And um, that will be our conclusion for today. So uh, wonderful, we can move on from here. And um, as I mentioned, um, I sent this out prior, but um, what's great about today is we have, um, we have folks, on, well, actually Joey um, is feeling ill today, so Joey will not be on the line, but uh, I think um, uh, Leanne will be able to pick up for him in terms of ServiceNow expertise. But we have representation here today uh, with our practice leads that, that cover um, all of uh, the, some of the biggest platforms out there today. So ServiceNow, uh, Pega, Appian, uh, Kamunda, and then certainly uh, we have a couple folks, as you can see, there will that are cl our cloud services practice leads uh, that cover things like AWS and Azure. So uh, just a just a, a great group of people covering, um, 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 you know, several of the biggest platforms out there today, and they will be on the line today talking through some things, but also available for those specific questions. So uh, why don't we move on from there? There we go. So just a few quick things about Sky, so you have some context as to who we are and why we're having this discussion. And there's a lot on here, but let me just draw your attention to a few things so you can understand you know, the, the niche area that we play in. So up at the very top, um, you can see in bold, complex business process challenges. That, that's really what Sky Solutions is about. Everything we do, whether it's our strategic solutions or actual hands-on technology solutions, it's really about solving 
business process challenges. And uh, the way we structure a company in terms of our partnerships uh, with the platforms that we're aligned with to the expertise uh, that we have here um, on our side of the table, it's, it's really all about uh, business process challenges. And you can see that we, we work primarily in the public sector, uh, healthcare and financial services. Um, oftentimes the challenges that we're solving in those sectors, as different as they are, can, can have some commonalities and we bring those to bear in the solutions that we bring forth. Um, if you uh, look there in the middle, um, you know, typically we're, we're, we're helping our customers in one of, uh, one of two ways or both. On the strategy side, you know, this could be um, an, an organization that's not sure about what platform they want to go to or what, what they want to choose. We can help them with an analysis of alternatives or maybe a, a proof of concept with one particular platform if they want to test out a use case uh, to see if it's the right platform or the right direction to go in. So that's on the strategy side. On the technology side, uh, this is really the hands-on um, um, the, the hands-on work that we're doing with the platforms that we work with. So low code, no code development, uh, the RPA work we do, all the agile development work that we do. So um, it really kind of falls into one of those two camps. And then at the bottom of your screen, just a few things that I think would be relevant to the federal audience today. We are uh, an 8A certified organization. Uh, we are on the GSA Schedule 70. We do have our ISO certification. So um, obviously uh, taking that aspect of things very seriously. Uh, again, we've talked about some of our partnerships, but uh, uh, for, uh, for certain, um, our PEGA partnership is our most mature. We're a silver PEGA partner. Uh, we've, been, we've been that way for years, uh, soon to become gold, probably in the months ahead. Below that, we are a ServiceNow specialist partner. ServiceNow is probably our fastest growing practice, for sure, uh, as we're seeing the need for that tool uh, increase dramatically across the federal government. And then certainly uh, our partnerships with Comunda, Salesforce, and Appian and our cloud uh, partnerships at AWS and Azure. So um, again, uh, hopefully this, is, this gives you a snapshot as to who we are, what we do, and uh, why we're here today. And um, let's go ahead and move on, please. Wonderful. And last but not least, just a snapshot of some of our clients. Uh, as I mentioned, we do a lot of work in the federal government, as you'll see with some of the agencies on here, but uh, we're doing a lot of work also with the commercial sector. And I just think that's important to know because um, I think when we have this, this level uh, this breadth of expertise, we can, I think, bring a lot of ideas and thought to the table when, when we are looking at any, any number of, uh, of challenges. Oftentimes, the things we're solving for in the private sector are, are very similar to the challenges that, that are happening within uh, some of the agencies that we work with. So anyone that has any questions on um, uh, work that we're doing specifically for any of these clients up here, again, um, feel free to let, let us know, let me know, and we're happy to give you more of those details. All right. Well, uh, Without further ado, we're going to jump into the survey questions to kick off um, the discussion topics today. And this is where I would love to bring uh, Leanne back into the fold. And um, as a reminder, again, Leanne is our platform operations lead. So uh, Leanne oversees all of our platforms, uh, Pega, ServiceNow, Appian, Salesforce, and others. And so um, she has expertise and and um, um, and um, a history uh, with, with all of those. But uh, Leanne, let me go ahead and bring you back into the fold to uh, start off with our, our survey questions and kick off the discussion topics for today. Great. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate the introduction. Yeah, so as Mike said, we're going to bring up two questions. We'll just do them back to back. And then with the answers, we'll um, tie those into our thoughts around the discussion topics. So the first one you see on the screen, hopefully it popped up for everybody. It says, which of the following IT solutions does your agency does your organization or perhaps the customers you work with rely upon that require the most upkeep? So what we're really getting at here is you probably want to select more than one answer, but thinking from a staffing effort, manpower, cost of doing business, that's really the upkeep of keeping the lights on in production is what we're after. So which one of these of the majority takes the most upkeep? Okay, so give it a couple more seconds to get all the answers in that we can. And then, uh, Yanni, when you feel like the results are coming in, pretty, pretty good count, you can display the results, please. Yeah, I have 28 out of 39. That's great. Yeah, let's go with that. Good. So I appreciate that some of you caught my humor. So confusing integrations looks like it's the leader because yes, m most often with those point solutions, you want to integrate them all because there's so much great data in different places. You want one centralized place. So um, that is a strong one, but I actually see now that platform solution is the most upkeep. 
And that's really insightful because what that's telling us is that understanding what is available and how to maintain all the user, your business user needs and stay up with the, the releases that come out are just so many balls to juggle. So let all of our panel discussion leads talk through those particular factors. It's a really interesting outcome there. With ERP, I think that's also one where you really have to conform to process and maybe it's not as widely used. So it's, it's pretty telling that integration, cloud services, centralizing everything is the right trend in how we should service our customers. Thank you, Yanni. If you can pull up the next question. So along the same lines, we're going to get a little bit deeper into the specifics of why. So which, oh, I'm sorry, let me pause for a moment. What's the question? Browser mode? If we're having trouble with any attendees accessing the survey questions, uh, let's, oh, I see, does the survey work in browser mode? I'm not sure, maybe someone else can answer. Uh, so I'll give a little more background on this question. Yes, yes Jan, uh, I, uh, I can read the, the, the second question. Um, well, I can see it, no, I'm fine. I'm, I'm just more for the um, audience, I'll just continue. So I've, thank you, Angel. Uh, which of these considerations have more influence on decisions for your agency, your organization, or again, your customers' IT solution needs? So when we are asking about this question, the essential factors that drive project prioritization what gets funded, what gets the startup, or what gets pushed to the back burner because we just don't have enough time for the people doing the development work, getting all the work out to your business users, getting things released into production is really what we're after. So what is the driving force when it comes to project prioritization? You could select the majority answer there, that'd be great. And I apologize to those, I guess in browser mode, you cannot see the Q&A or survey questions. So feel free to interject. We don't have a broad mute button across this panel discussion. So feel free to interject anything you have. Okay, so as the results come in, you can display when you think the majority are there. Great, so the results are coming in with tie right now in the highest percentage for a cost of support and reducing implementation risk. Well, that's really good because with governance, compliance, and regulations, if that's a driving factor, there's a lot out of our control. So I'm glad to see that the things that are scoring highest are things that with that shifting to the left, planning more collaboration, communication are things that we can actually mitigate with implementing IT solutions. So we'll keep all these in mind as we talk through the three discussion questions that we wanted to present to you today. Okay. And, and Leanne, as you're going into those, I just want to remind everyone that this, this is kind of an, an open forum. So feel free to you know, shout out a question or, or type one in. And, and if you hear me or somebody else jump in and seemingly step on someone's toes, that, that's kind of okay. That's what this is all about. So um, you know, um, feel free to keep it free flowing. Yeah, thank you, Mike, good point. All right, so we can move on to the next slide. All right, so we're gonna talk about three topics today. The first one, high level, big picture about platforms, ERPs, point solutions kind of mixed into that and custom development work. So the three gamuts of where IT solutions typically fall. fall. Within that, then you have an additional combination of on cloud and on premise. So we have narrowed it down to five talking points for today on the slide, just to give you a visual as we have hopefully a very collaborative discussion for the remaining of our call. These factors really come into play when trying to make decisions about what to keep, what to grow, what to sunset, and so on. So I'll pause there to let you read through the five things that we've listed here. We had quite a healthy debate on what to include and, and, and in the, they're in no particular order. They're just numbered in sequence in case it's easy to follow as we talk through them. But which five we listed here kind of we feel like are the, the broad majority, the 80%. So if you have any others, list them or shout them out as we go if you feel like something is missing in your experience. 
um, with that, in no particular order of who speaks, um, both panel and audience, um, we'll let Onhill, our Appian practice lead, introduce himself and then share some of his experiences with these factors. Yeah, hi, Leah. Thank you. Hello. Thank Thanks. you so much. Hi, everybody. Um, good morning. Uh, my name is Angel Rangel. Um, I am the Appian practice lead at Sky Solutions, um, which uh, I have more than 18 years uh, of experience working with platforms and, and custom software development. Um, and basically, I, I think here everybody in this call are familiar with the software development projects and specifically those where we need to automate business processes, right? And, and one of, uh, as per my experience, one of the most critical tasks is, uh, at the beginning of the project is defining the technology stack. Uh, that we are going to use in order to deliver the solution. But before, right before that, uh, I think the main question that we need to ask is, uh, is more about like, uh, okay, what is the best option that we can have in the market, right? Uh, that you will maximize the value delivered to our clients or which approach I will use. And, and, and we have a, a kind of summarized in this slide like in three different ways, right? The first, one, of the, one of the options is to go, go with an existing solution, kind of a ERP or any commercial software that already has implemented one of the, some of the best practices of the, your process model or your process, sorry, um, that where, where you will basically adopt whatever the solution has. So basically what you need to have is uh, you need to, in, in the project it will be more on the change management, management side where you will apply some changes in your business processes in order to ad, uh, adopt whatever is, it comes with the solution. That is one, one, one option, right? The second option is basically go with the custom development. Uh, whenever you, you, you pick um, uh, frameworks, software development frameworks that are out there that it can give you the freedom to do and, and customize your business processes in order to create a solution that is exactly uh, uh, aligned with what you, how you are handling or using your, your business processes. And there are some pros and cons for each option, and I will mention at the, at the, end, at the, 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 at the end. And the third option is basically go with a platform um, where basically we have a platform from, uh, from my perspective is having something in the middle where you will have the best of the wor two worlds, where you will have a, a reduced, uh, 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 some time to market that is kind of, kind of susceptible. Normally the, the, in platform projects, you are talking about projects between three to six months to release the first version, whether in the, in the, in the ERP or the fishing solution, Maybe you can have a faster time to market, but in the other hand, also this is, is very restrictive in the in the customization side. Whenever you go with a, a existing solution or ERP or, or commercial software, you are really limited in the amount of customization that you can do there. Or if you decide to go with the uh, customizations, really they will be uh, um, expensive, or or either it can be you can lose the benefits of having to implement those kind of commercial software. And in the opposite side, in commercial, in doing custom development, basically you you will have to have a very long running project. Maybe sometimes it's more than six months, and a lot of people that it will be taking care of, development support, etc. And and that can be uh, that can affect the the return of investment in, in certain uh, point. Um, now, going with the platform also, they have some kind of um, uh, challenge. Uh, the platform itself, you need to, to, to make sure that the platform is being properly used and you are getting the best from, uh, from, the, from, from the platform or the, the best benefits. And how you reach or how you achieve that? Well, basically, you, will, you need to start uh, focusing in order to use this platform uh, uh, more frequently in your in your solutions, so you can take advantage of the reusable components that you will be building across the time. And as long as you are moving and creating more and more solutions, this uh, uh, total cost of ownership is getting mitigated. You're getting getting a proper value because you will have a very good support of uh, uh, of team uh, for this platform. Along with that, you can uh, basically. Uh, take advantage of some templates that has been already created for those platforms in order to satisfy some of the some of the business requirements that uh, most of the process uh, uh, has there um, I will do a pause here um, is there any any questions so far or is there anything any any uh, additional comment that you would like to add in these three um, uh, options 
Well, and 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 Angel and, and maybe even uh, Anil or or someone else. Uh, you know, I know we talked also just about the the general idea that in the federal government, you know, there's a mix of custom development, legacy solutions, and ERP point solutions and platforms. If we're talking about this whole idea of platform adoption challenges in general, right? Because it, I know that oftentimes the the business processes that are um, you know. Uh, being dealt with, sometimes all these other things are required, right? And um, I just, I wonder if there's some thoughts just on uh, the fact that these three things kind of exist and how that affects platform adoption challenges in general, if maybe we're trying to move a bunch of business processes over to one platform and that becomes a challenge. Um, I, again, I, I don't know if uh, Anil or Angel maybe want to speak to that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can I can speak uh, about about this. Um, basically, uh, one of the main challenges uh, whenever you are uh, in the process to implement uh, a platform, it, it's basically to define all these uh, standards, right? And and also to have a real vision about the users of the platform in the enterprise, making sure that you have a proper uh, uh, best practices definition and uh, uh, maybe establish a center of excellence that it will keep control of all the projects and try to orchestrate the resources that you will have available for the projects mm -hmm. and, and create a complete plan of implementation that it will uh, maximize the value uh, provided that we can obtain from, from the platform implementation. Gotcha. And, and Angel, do you, do you find, because again, that, that's one of those things that sounds kind of obvious to me, but do you find that most agencies and organizations have those plans in place, or is that something that some some organizations, you know, don't have and maybe need help with? Yeah, and and this is, this is a very good question. Nor, normally, in the in as for my experience, whenever you whenever there is a need for a platform, uh, sometimes this need or this decision is comes from the business mm -hmm. instead of from IT, and that can be a challenge, you know, because uh, whenever it comes from the business, there is a lot of uh, non-functional requirements that are around that it doesn't need to be, it is, are not really visible for the from the business perspective. Let's say, for example, uh, in the federal government, we have a lot of uh, compliance and certifications that we need to be uh, aligned to. And uh, sometimes uh, those kind of uh, validations are not taken in consideration during the selection. So uh, I, uh, that, this is something that is really important to have whenever you are in a decision to implement a software, right? You need to make sure that we have, the, the platform is already certified so you, you can focus on what is really important. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that's good to know. And um, like Leanne, I don't, I, I'm not sure if we're ready to move on to the next thing or if, uh, if any yeah, of folks have anything else to mention. I think we had a couple mention. more great mm -hmm. examples from some of our colleagues. So uh, mm -hmm. Mahesh, why don't you share some of your insights? It defaults to muted, so you might have to unmute yourself. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Hi, everyone. This is Mahesh. Uh, I'm one of the platform lead for cloud operations here and also a DPM architect and also I'm working as a project technical lead for one of the state agencies here who are transforming their existing legacy application to a platform. So I would like to add some benefits to the platform here. So using plat in my career, I used both uh, custom development and also platforms, but using platforms, developers get, developers need not worry about time consuming pieces like coding rules about screen sizes or scalability or uh, any other time consuming pieces. So the development is, much quicker with platforms and also with the proof of concept. Whenever we have an idea, it's very easy to incorporate or start uh, start developing in platforms rather than in uh, custom development. We don't need to do a lot of in-depth technical coding or proof of concept. So that's why, uh, and also the project implementation will uh, take much longer time with custom development than, uh, than with platform. And also the team size is also one of the constraints here like uh, with custom development we might need a bigger team to complete the project when compared to platform that's a good point about having a leaner team when it's not custom like that uh, knowledge transfer is far easier as well when you um, approach it with the platform or ERP perspective that's true. thank you Mahesh yeah and Goda why don't for us to close out this topic why don't you share some of your customer examples Goda has been very involved and in expert in cloud services and has a lot of great customer experiences there yeah, thanks, Ian, for the introduction. 
So yeah, platform adoption, as Anhel has mentioned, it's quite challenging. And many organizations and customers have questions like, you know, what to choose, why to choose it, and what are the costs associated with it? And is it scalable? Is it reliable? And, you know, many more questions going on in their mind. So I would like to share one of uh, my experience with one of my client who was very happy about the decision to move on to a platform. So on one fine summer morning, or maybe around, I think it was in 2018, where uh, one of my former clients on-site production server with over 20 applications running on it failed to respond and various downstream services were hit and uh, all my team had to chase all the system administrators and you know after a full sleepless day of uh, desperate but you know helpless phone calls our team finally decided to check the service physical location and to a surprising and a shocking cause, you know, the server, uh, the cause of the server failure was, you know, turned out to be the short circuit at the site, which was quite <laughs> shocking and surprising. And the schedules of 200 plus customers were disrupted for our over 18 hours, you know, which was quite a huge loss for our customers and many of the client for our client as well. So basically the server in infrastructure was very ancient to say the least, and it just simply gave up. So we had a board of uh, architects meeting uh, after a couple of weeks, and we had two options in front of us. One was have a duplicate of all the servers so the downtime would be minimum, which of course would be huge cost for us. And the other was to move to cloud entirely, eliminating the redundancy, susceptibility, the outages, and making the data more easily available. And needless to say, we choose the later and the client was extremely happy with the decision and the applications became more reliable and the, and the costs were reduced and there was a lot of cost efficiency and also the business continuity was great. And yes, I mean, it was not just a single meeting that we decided that we will move to cloud. It definitely involved time, it involved people, it involved research, you know, to make the decision to move to cloud or to move to a platform. But at the end, you know, what matters is, of course, the business continuity and the cost efficiency for most of the organizations. So, yeah, for you, for all of you, uh, we are here to happily, you know, help answer any questions you have in this regard. Yeah. Thank you, Goda. You hit on the, the survey results as well. That's I mean, that's exa that exact example was how it scored highest, reducing implementation risk and that cost of support. Um, the best quality code and production release would always still fail without the hardware supporting it. So it's a good lesson learned, a good example of uh, what we're trying to talk through and really see where the right place to store information in the cloud and access it through a platform. It really is the right way to go. So thank you. With that, why don't we move to the next discussion topic? Um, it's similar, but I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, um, can is there anything to be said about ERP meets platform? Because one of the things um, that I think we are about to experience is that we are very entrenched in ERP type solutions. We've got a lot of money and a lot of years and a lot of capability built in there, but they still represent point type solutions, even though they're in that ERP environment. Right. And it seems to me like the, the platform represents a new and modern way forward but that it also could help become the integration factor for stuff on the ERP side, right? So you get the best of both worlds. And am I, am I, you know, no. recapping that correctly from my own market research? Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. I think so. Um, so just to give, uh, you know, there are like six or seven customer success stories that we had is wrap around, um, you know, around the ERP solutions that they are there because you know, organizations are running on these ERP systems to achieve their business outcomes or their mission uh, for a number of years. It's, it's not easy uh, to migrate, switch over to the platform. I think, you know, what we have seen um, a great, um, you know, uh, success is to wrap around and, you know, the new way of transforming towards, you know, digital journey of the customer. So primarily any customer interaction is through the platform to start with and then any backend operations that goes along uh, to the ERP. Um, at that front, you know, we have developed several solutions, um, you know, around uh, you know uh, financial transactions that typically happens in the public sector, uh, whether it is grants management, or whether it is HR management, or is it contracts management uh, platform uh, upfront, and then you know connecting with 
you know, either Oracle ERP or Momentum or other financial systems on the back end. I mean, you know, that seems to be a new norm um, and, and to get to quick success rather than, um, you know, throwing away the investments that have been there for like, you know, number of decades. Yeah, thank you, Anil. And just the, for for everyone, Anil Bonapelli was just speaking. He is our principal and founder and one of our PEGA experts that is just making Department of Justice just grow in their usage of PEGA platform adoption and digital transformation in things like that. So the grant management example he shared is all part of taking those ERPs and integrating them into the platform. So we have documentation, quick write-ups, and other material. If you'd like more on that, we can definitely elaborate on the uh, that, that question after this call. So great thing to bring up, thank you. Okay, so with that, um, if everyone's comfortable with, we'll move to discussion topic number two. Thank you, Yanni. Okay, so, oh, I like the graphics. They've improved <laughs> since I last saw this. This is fantastic. Uh, platform expectations and level setting, and that is a huge topic where you have to meet and exceed everyone's expectations, both IT and business. And they, they're always ever-changing based on needs, priority, world shifts in what we're dealing with from a location and work perspective, you have it. So this is a big one. And the more we can put conversation around it, the more I think it actually leads to quality work, less defects, less confusion or aha moments down the line, that it just becomes more clear and more concise. So we'd like to spend some time talking about these examples. Again, we limited it to four key major points. It, the list could always grow. I'm sure if anyone has any else things else to describe, um, we will um, certainly ask you to interject. So I will um, pass it over to my colleague, Driss, he would like to share some of his thoughts and experience specifically at the IRS. He has invested a lot of time and energy into improving their platform adoption with PEGA, and we'd love to hear some of his insights on these expectations. All right, thank you so much, Leanne. Hello, everyone. I'm Driss Alami. I'm very excited about having the opportunity of speaking to you all today. A uh, little bit about me, and I don't like this part to talk about myself, but. Um, digital transformation uh, is one of my passions. Uh, I have led several digital transformation projects in the state of New Jersey and now in the federal space. I'm currently a PEGA subject matter expert for the IRS, which is uh, undergoing a massive digital transformation effort. I hope you will see value in what we are presenting today. So without overdue, I will go ahead and shed the light on our second topic, level setting platform expectations. As my colleague Leanne said, there is a lot uh, to say about this topic, but we tried to narrow it down to the most important points in, in our opinion. Um, what happens when you get the platform and what to expect then? So the first point, don't expect a silver bullet. As you start in the digital transformation journey, you have chosen the product and you think, hey, I nailed it. In reality, the product you picked is just a product. Uh, you would need an adoption strategy, which may include implementation, the right partner, governance, training, and a COE. Many organizations make the mistake at the beginning of assuming that if my team members go through training or get certified, they will be ready to embark in the journey. The reality is, to be successful, you would need a combination of subject matter expert and then your newly trained team members. The SMEs would help you with providing the lessons learned, the experience, the know-how around the tool to accelerate the transformation and mentor the new team members to become SMEs themselves and make more makers. Adopting a low-code platform alone will not ensure success. Without combining the right platform and the proper adoption strategy, uh, you might end up with another failed project, unfortunately, or taking a step back in your digital transformation journey. Going into our second point, be careful to decide out of the box versus customization. And this is key because you're getting a cloud platform that comes with uh, its predefined functionalities. 
So building a low-code platform is like building on top of a Lego blocks, right? So you can do awesome things if everything you need fits into your square blocks. But the moment you need a special feature, you're forced to build custom code. And integrating that code can take longer and may cost more than a custom-made solution itself. So in one way, I can, you can see it as an advantage because it, it is a good trade-off to have. It will constantly push you as an organization to rethink your business processes and try to leverage as much as you can from the out-of-the-box functionalities. Third point, don't boil the ocean of complexity. In the beginning, choose the low-hanging fruit. Aim to solve a focused challenge in a single remote office or a department or a functional organization where the challenge is contained within that group. Start with a process that doesn't have highly sensitive information or integration requirement, at least initially. Started small and simple in scope can allow the team to find more success and iterate without creating any risk to the business out of the gate. So often these obligations gonna grow, connect, and become more business critical over time. But always think about small success upfront so you have your lessons learned and you can apply them to more um, like complex solutions, like find, find your ride along project. Last, and this is, if anything, um, this is the most important point in my eyes, which is don't stop the learning process. The low-code platforms evolve constantly. Uh, it is important for your team to be at the forefront of the new releases and the development to take full advantage of what the tool can offer and not just stumble across new functionalities by chance. Keeping your team constantly aware of what's new comes with the renewing their certifications or going through the free available trainings courses that these platforms offer. In this day and age, technology breakthroughs are constant and fast. And the reality is that the version you buy today would become legacy tomorrow. Go in with the mindset that you should be evolving as the tool evolves would allow you to have that competitive edge that would differentiate you in a vertical landscape. These were the four points we wanted to cover for, uh, for this topic. Uh, welcome any questions. And I'll pass it back to Leanne to cover if we don't have any more. Thank you, Dris. I have a couple cool. of things to share yes. if no one else has any first. Yeah. One thing I'd like to report uh, back to everyone and just even get your thoughts on it to hear if you're receiving this kind of support from the vendors you work with is uh, customer outcomes teams, especially geared to platform. That's something that has pretty much grown out of like customer success. And in the last couple of years, we're seeing these outcome teams grow. And with that, it's uh, related to customer success, ongoing, continuous, land and expand within the platform. So for the salesman perspective, yes, it's to grow licenses, grow expansion, and adopt that platform. But for people that are more services-minded, like people at heart that are the developers, most of us on this call included, we really see it as something that it's just that continuous learning to information share with your business users. We can never expect our business users, our customers that are the end users of the platform to know what's coming from a product release perspective, or even know how to take what they're doing and transform it into an easier, faster, cleaner way to work. There's just data overload and what's good data, what's bad data, who's to say when you're just encumbered with too much data. So that's one thing that I like to consider when thinking about platform adoption as well, is having the IT product owners, the administrators that work alongside the liaisons to the business all work much more in a collaborative approach so that our business users really can just see what's ahead and really have an outline and vision for what they're after and what they can do. That all goes back to higher expectations and exceeding them when you have happy customers using the front end of whatever technology that's in front of you. So thank you, Driss, for setting that up so well for me to talk about that. Um, any other 
questions or thoughts before we move on to the last topic today? I, I have a, a, a question around this, although I'm, I'm not sure exactly how to ask it. It kind of goes something like, um, I, I can get excited about in several of the various platforms I see out there with respect to a requirement we have coming up. Um, basically, trying to establish a platform where people can run to to build their applications rather than splintering off and contracting with separate vendors to do separate initiatives, separate ATOs, et cetera, et cetera, right? So the consolidation of things. But there, there's a huge, what, maybe experience or skills gap in knowing how to set up the governance or set up the COE to help that survive its value proposition over time. Is that, um, so is, is there help out there? So in other words, getting the, getting the platform in place, exciting, great. No silver bullets, but we got to do some things seriously. Sounds like everything else you've said is about kind of a cultural shift. And definitely for us, it would be a cultural shift to know how to ask the right questions in order to find the right skill sets, to put on the right teams, to provide the right governance and structure to do everything you just said. So is there, is there any experience with some of the clients with respect to they, you, they, you know, they were deer in the headlights at first and you helped mature their thinking and management of what they bought? <laughs> yeah, I, I'll share my thoughts and then pass it over to others because I'd like to hear their thoughts as well. Um, anytime we go in with that in mind, it's looking at first, first off, looking at existing process they're clearly running their business in some way today. It might be with a, like going to three or four places and when they're, you know, ideally the outcome will be to go to one to two places like that platform, but really understanding process with platform as a parallel track and then the people as a third track becomes part of that initial discovery. So when I approach that, when I'm presented with that kind of question, thinking about service now, I look at how they're doing things today and then I'll look at what they're hoping to get into production and move out of their current way of working. And with that, it's really staggering what works and should be should maintain and be left there for the operations to run while you're incorporating and adopting. So it becomes, a, 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 in the initial rounds of doing this, in the initial increments, it's really prototyping and showing how work can be done and spending far more time in collaborative sign-offs during the prototyping that has helped to get new departments or new groups incorporated into the platform. That has helped quite a bit and really showing how the new way of working will improve and show value. So anytime I can demonstrate value, show metrics to improve work does help with that overall expectation setting and then builds a nice roadmap for people wanting the next thing versus feeling like they're tasked with the next thing. It's that adoption and consumption of change concept that I'm trying to refer to now, if that helps. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and I would like to add uh, over this, uh, uh, my experience and, and basically it's uh, whenever we, uh, we have a platform, we are so fast in order to deliver solutions. It's so fast that we sometimes forget about uh, uh, the, these, kind of governance over the platform. At the end of the day, we need to make sure that all these solutions that we are building are aligned with the best practices. We are not going to end up with a monster or some kind of type of customization that is not, is going to make everything complex. So yeah, in the, uh, we, here in Sky Solutions, what we normally do when you arrive to a project is basically to establish uh, those kind of uh, best practices that it comes with our experience. Um, and also help in during the development process, creating these automations for the pipeline, you know, creating these DevOps pipelines in order to make sure that we are able to, to deliver uh, the, the kind of governance that we would like to apply uh, over the platform. And this is really a very good point I really would um, uh, point to consider during the implementation of the platform. So in, in addition to that, what, what we have instituted within the Sky solution is that a, a lab uh, and a center of excellence across and now as uh, we have uh, uh, Leanne looking into. So we have created the guardrails that had to be there in place to make sure that you know, these platforms would provide that initial value that the customer is looking at, but at the same time, 
creating that infrastructure, creating um, the, the change management process and as well as um, customer adoption as they are bringing a lot more applications and processes uh, into um, you know, these platforms. Yeah, this is Kumar from Sarka. Um, kind of, uh, you know, going towards what Anil was saying. How, I mean, my prior experience working with similar implementations, having a center of excellence team as a shared services group, working and along with the other teams in kind of best practices, or whether it's POCs, pilots, you know, doing that and working with uh, other teams to educate. Uh, I've seen that as a success mantra. Uh, for large implementations, especially platform-based implementations. So kind of agree with, with all the things that uh, the team has spoken. All right, thank you. Great, thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah I just wanted to kind of wrap up the conversation. Um, as you said, it is one thing to get excited about the product. Once you get it, now what, right? So, and we, and it's definitely, you need a combination of both a uh, product that will work for you and for your business processes and the adoption strategy that goes with it. And sometimes don't tackle this as a mountain, like your center of excellence could be one person uh, in the beginning and then it grows, right? As your needs grows and as you start, as, you, as I said in one of the points, start with the low hanging fruit, choose a pilot. It could be just a small success. You're going to learn a lot. And think about it, and you need the right partner, just the right SMEs, because the way if I'm going to provide a metaphor here, uh, these platforms is like they give you the foundation. You need your SMEs to kind of lay out for you the house. And then you get your folks to kind of paint, uh, just do some decoration into the rooms to make it your own, but to lay the foundation, to have that structure, it is key when you're starting have the right SMEs there to kind of think like from a Pega perspective, there are so many questions. And I, as an example, from my past experience, uh, we found a client that it wasted three months because they at first expected that the citizen development, they sell it as a low code platform, just go to training and you get to be ready to go. But they found that, okay, it's one thing to know how to handle the tool and another to read, to think how to lay that foundation for it. And these uh, subject matter experts would help you uh, handhold and mentor your uh, employees to become those subject matter experts. I know you don't need them later on, or just in, you might need them as a consultation, but it is key as you're starting or building from the ground, uh, you need somewhat of that experience to just get you on the right foot and then it's just smooth sailing afterward. Thank you. Absolutely. Great. Thank you, Driss. I appreciate that. And that's a great setup for our last discussion point. It's all really talking about what is, what are those foundational scope considerations when you're thinking about the platform center of excellence, building out uh, what you would need to have that long-term adoption strategy and that vision for the future. The word roadmap is used continuously like what's in the roadmap how do you build it but really equating that to the business value is what we want to talk about here that will again tie back to reducing risk making easier adoption and less support down the line as well as mentioned earlier an administrator running a platform where there are things in requirements and story form with strong acceptance criteria just can really build um, on what your long-term vision is and in creating that adoption strategy. So from the bottom up, as this slide shows, we have limited to four topics, could be many, but uh, we wanna start by just kind of stressing what we've all heard throughout our conversation today, combining IT and business stakeholder needs and involving them upfront in the foundation is so important. And um, with that, you kind of work your way up and see how you get into more specifics with the different teams involved, architecture, infrastructure, and security, making sure they're part of that collaboration so that you don't run into a compliance issue down the line. You don't run into a delay based on an architecture or an infrastructure need. So you can just see the value in incorporating that collaboration when you're developing the strategy is so important. Um, that will lead to being able to incrementally grow, have new departments come in. 
the best kind of feedback we hear is if one person, one part department is using our plat a piece of a platform, and then another department wants to use it. When can we get involved? Those kinds of things and be able to absorb the new work in a very seamless way of growing is um, really what we're trying to uh, achieve here. So with that, it can also be overwhelming. And uh, I want to make sure that we talk a little bit about both the mix of people on the phone that may be interested in making that transformative jump of combining that ERP with platform or potentially just assessing where you are. You've had this platform and all these user licenses out there for some time and you don't feel like you're getting your value for it. How do you fix that? Where, how do you identify the problems identify where you can grow and go from there. And that's all in building that viable roadmap and what we're discussing today. So with, we only have a few moments left, so why don't I just open up to anyone that would like to share some thoughts on this panel or audience, and then we'll be able to have a couple minutes for questions. Uh, I can share my experience, Leanne, over here. Yeah, great. Thank you, Uday. Yeah. yeah, welcome. Uday is one of our Comunda is our Comunda practice lead expert in microservices and had a lot a lot of great experience across both federal and private sector. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so uh, there was a, a particular client who is uh, leading uh, banking and management banking applications. So th their applications were purely running on on-premise servers. And those applications were hitting uh, the federal servers to get the user data or any kind of credit bureau information. Uh, they were struck up at a point that it, it became very difficult to manage on-premise servers and also the cost also, it's uh, becoming huge for their support. To overcome those, uh, they want, they tried with different products and ultimately they ended up like uh, wasting a lot of money uh, and also time. So when we, uh, uh, me and my team went over there, uh, we were able to identify the pain points they were facing on on-premise and we suggested uh, uh, the cloud solutions, uh, different cloud solutions which are feasible for them and uh, taking security concerns, infrastructure and, and everything. And uh, we provided a, a, a suite which uh, so, uh, suits well to their existing applications, so there won't be any mismatch with the kind of data flowing from to uh, external applications and also internally. So we also help them uh, in uh, creating a kind of a COE in that particular organization, organization and uh, even provided training for business users also. Even before starting the application itself, we made sure that they were able to understand uh, the platform operations, how it exactly ups, uh, happens on a high level. Thank you, Uday. Appreciate that. Um, Thank you. Any other comments before we have a few moments for Q&A? I would like to say about some of the challenges that were that we faced while uh, migrating from an existing legacy system to a platform. So, like not having a proper plan for data migration and also reversing the changes as the, subject, as the SMEs are caught in between existing and uh, improvements. So we had to do redo the, a lot of the stuff. So that's, that's what's slowing the pace of the project. Yeah, that's a good point. Thank you, Mahesh. Okay, well, We've reached almost time, so uh, any, if there are any questions from the audience, um, it looks like I have one here that I can um, share with everyone, but is there any other questions from anyone before I share a last question? Okay, I think we have time for this one then. So here's one question to pose, and then um, we can think on it, and we'll share some answers on this. Um, if at any point we decide to do a lift and shift of our existing applications to the cloud, could you provide an estimate on how much the company will be able to save? How much in time, effort, people? Like the total cost of ownership is what we're getting at here. And if I could get some answers on that, that would be great to hear from you. Yeah, sure. I mean, if you want to know the cost of ownership around, you know, the total, there is something called as total cost of ownership calculator, which can be used to give, you know, the potential mm -hmm. customers a financial metric 
on their savings and you know in a time span of uh, three to five years so currently you know at skype we are actually hosting a web app on the cloud which is saving us around uh, 190k in a span of five years which is like very beneficial for us as well that's great that's good to hear. Now, is this available that we could, uh, you could find that on the internet? Or how does a TCO calculator work? Yeah, how it, can you get a hold of one? Yeah, if you have, if, if you have an Azure account, uh, there is something, there is a, a service called as TCO calculator. So if you know your current server details, if you know how, how much of server are you using, what's the database and all your configurations, you can just plug in it for the on-premise, and then it'll calculate how much it would be on the cloud and give you the comparison and it will tell you how much you're saving. That's great. Yeah, if anyone uh, would like assistance in um, exploring that further, please reach out. Um, we'd be happy to provide the, that access to that information. Okay, so appreciate we're at time. So why don't we just um, show our last slide and how to contact Mike or I and thank you firstly for your time and involvement, the discussion was very good today on just kind of talking through all the different things we could with the platform and ROI challenges. We tried to start, you know, with a good place for, to get a position of where we are within trying to expand platform and uh, knowledge and how we're moving along with our customers. And um, really appreciate that you were part of this conversation today. Um, thank you for attending. And Mike, if you want any closing statements, feel free. Yeah, with, and with our yep. last uh, 45 seconds, um, yep. just a reminder that for anyone out there that still has questions, uh, not only can you send them in to us, but if anybody out there would like to even spend time with any of our practice leads on the phone for 30 minutes, as a courtesy, we're happy to set that up where you say, you know, I've been thinking about this. So I had this question about this platform or, or what have you. Um, just let me know. And again, as a courtesy to anybody in the audience, we're happy to set that up and just have a productive call and let you get some of those questions answered. So keep that in mind. Um, thanks again, everybody, for joining today. I hope, uh, hope you got some value out of this. We, we are um, doing a, a second of uh, our three-part series. It was it January 12th, Leanne? I believe so. Yeah, we'll get the invite yeah, out. We'll, yep. we'll get those we'll out. We'll get another, yeah. one, another one coming up. So um, that's it. Everyone have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for spending time with us, and we will get this recording out as soon as we can. So thank you again.